what is the Newton's law of motion? If it is the question then we need to think there are three laws of motions of Newton's. So we know well that in 1687 the British scientist Sir Isaac Newton published a book called Philosophia Naturals Principia Mathematica. It's in his everlasting book that is published on 8, 1687. And this book, the three questions and three laws of motions was published. And this is a very important question in the chapter of motion. So what are the Newton's law of motion? So I have written three laws here in this whiteboard and you must know, it's written on your book also, what are those three laws. If I just think about the first law, then we find something inside that what about inertia and what about force. So if we read it, that everybody continues in its state of rest. Here is a word, it's called rest, that means based on the surroundings if the uh, position of anybody doesn't change that's called rest or if the uniform motion in a straight line in a straight line until an external force is applied to the body so the first law said if if anybody continues in a state of rest the rest and also if there is an uniform motion in a straight line so things will be going similar on the next level if there is no external force applied what does it mean from this law we can have two different concepts number one is force and number two is inertia so as we know that force is something like external that will be applied to anybody to make some changes on its position if it's rest then it would be have some motions inside or even if it's in, in motion it could have been stopped by applying force so in case of force and inertia there are two different concepts that we can have from the first law of Newton's law of motion and most importantly, I shall be explaining the next level that what about inertia? Very frankly speaking, we know inertia as two different types. Inertia, inertia of rest and inertia of motion. <clears throat> so, in case of rest, there are two types of inertia of a body. It can be inertia of rest or inertia of motion like for example if you think about a running car a running bus somebody standing inside the bus and it's running on a speed like 30 meter per second so I mean 30 meter per minute or even some speed and then it's moving forwards if suddenly the bus stops then what will happen the passenger will lean forwards because when bus stops the adjacent part of the body with the bus will be stopped but the upper part of the body will be kept remaining the speed and then the, that the passenger lean forwards and that the complete example of inertia of motion so it's going on in our daily life and even in case of inertia of rest suppose if a car is just stops and, a, and a, somebody or any passenger standing inside the car and then it suddenly starts moving then what will happen the passenger or the body will lean backwards because when the car starts to move forwards the body was trying to keep the rest the state of rest and this tendency is called inertia so actually inertia is a tendency of a body the tendency of what tendency of keeping the state it was previously like if it was in rest phase it tries to continue the similar phase and that tendency is called inertia so in case of understanding the inertia we need to know this is actually tendency or properties properties 
so when we not need to memorize things without understanding if this is the questions what are the laws of newtons or what are the newtons law of motions we need to consider these three things the first thing is the first law is everybody continues in its state of rest or uniform velocity or uniform motion then in a straight line until until this means this until is in condition when there is a force applied the position will change and hence we can have another concept from physics uh, first law of newtons is force so this is simply external and i will explain it later on what is force types of force and application to the objects in case of second law this is very important also the rate of change of momentum this is also important in case of understanding momentum you know momentum is the cross connections or cross product of mass and velocity we know that momentum is expressed as p i'll explain it on the next class this p is equal to mv it means that the momentum is the cross production of mass and velocity so this change of momentum the rate it means per second per minute per hour actually per unit time so the change of momentum of a body is simply proportional this is very important simply proportional to the applied force that means the rate of change of momentum totally depends on the applied force and then the last part of the law the and takes place in the direction of the straight line along with the force acts that means if force acts in this direction the rate of change of momentum of a body will occur in this direction or if the direction is perpendicular to its then the rate of change of momentum of a body will occur in this direction so from the second law we can have two different things like the change of momentum the change of the rate of change of momentum depends on the force that is ex that is applied to the body and the direction so when in which directions the the uh, force is acting the rate of change will be on that directions so the second law is the rate of change of momentum of a body is proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction to the straight line along which the force acts so this is the second law and you must know there is a very well known equation comes from the second law is f is equal m a on the next class i will explain how the direct derivation comes like f equals to ma how these things occur and i will also explain some mathematical explanation about f equals to ms using the principle m equals to f equals to ma so as you know that f is force and m is mass so force is the cross production of mass and acceleration and most importantly very well known the third law every action to every action there is an equal and opposite directions or reactions there are two different words action and reaction so as there is an action and of course there is a reaction these two different things doesn't happen in single body it will happen in a two different body so it this is very important to know that actions and reactions both they have a same magnitude but opposite in direction reaction and reaction both is magnitude but this is simply action and reaction both are same in magnitude but simply opposite in direction so to know the third law we must know that every reaction every action has its equal and opposite reactions what is this suppose a body is moving here and somebody is moving here if it is p and this is q 
if P apply first to Q, if it is F1, then Q would be simply applied that exerts the same force to P, which is F2. And according to the law, we can say that F1 is equal to minus F2. So this equal sign expresses that it's same in magnitude and this minus sign is expresses they are opposite in direction. So in this lecture I only explain what are the third laws, first, second and third laws of motion of Newtons and from the next level of classes I shall be explaining what are the mathematical uh, applications and how these things can be explained in the next level. So to understand we just remain the first law, second law and the third law. So see you on the next class I shall be explaining what is momentum and what are some mathematical explanation and also how this equation derives. So take care and let me know what is the next requirements. Bye.